All right, uh, here's the second FRQ from the 2021 exam. As usual, if I have any corrections to make, I'll put it in the description below. So a group of students is investigating how the thickness of a plastic rod affects the maximum force which with the rod can be pulled without breaking. Two students are discussing models to represent how F max depends on rod thickness. Student A claims that F max is directly proportional to the radius of the rod. Student B claims that F max is directly proportional to the cross-sectional area of the rod. The area of the base of the cylinder shaded in gray in the figure above. The students have a collection of rods of the same material. The rods are the same length but come in a range of different thicknesses. Design an experimental procedure to determine which student's model of either correctly represents how F max depends on the rod's thickness. Um, okay, in the table below, list the quantities that would be measured in your experiment. Define a symbol to represent each quantity and the list of equipment that you would use to measure each quantity. You do not need to fill in every row if you do need to show. Okay. So we want to, um, we're going to, we're going to just, just test on different rods, how much force is necessary before it breaks. So we have to, um, you know, it, it kind of depends on how, how hard it is to break, but let's assume that whatever we're going to use to measure the force is will is is um isn't is enough so we need to measure so what do we need to measure is the radius of the rod which is r and this uh we would definitely use um you know a meter stick or a ruler to measure the radius of the rod because we definitely have to connect that the cross-sectional area of the rod is since they're cylinders Knowing the radius of the rod should be enough to know the cross-sectional area. Um, so I'm not going to like add another variable in for that because we're just going to do pi r squared. Now you could argue maybe how do you know they're super cylindrical or anything, but I would assume that like they're pretty good cylinders. I'm not going to, they're, they're telling us that they're cylinder rods, so I'm not going to really mess with that. The other thing is, is I'm going to pull on them. So I need to measure, so I might attach it to a spring scale. So a spring scale is something that measures the tension. So then, then I kind of have like this scale that can measure the force. And then I pull on this spring scale and then until it breaks, basically. So I think all I would need is to measure the force applied, force applied. And I'm going to say F. I'm going to just call that F. And then we're going to say the equipment for measuring that is the spring scale. That's all I really need, honestly. I would measure them for the different rods. I would measure them at different forces. Um, I think that's enough. I can't think of anything else I would need to do. I, and I would test them on different rods. So let's describe the overall procedure. I might go back to there as I'm describing my procedure. I might think like, oh, I need to measure something else. But uh, I think that that's all we need to do. So describe the overall procedure is um, one, measure the radius of all the rods. Maybe I should say radii, it's plural. Radiuses is radii. Two, um, we're going to uh, attach one end of the rod to say the wall or anchor, a fixed point basically. Three, attach the other end of the rod to a spring scale. Four, pull on scale slowly and um, record the force until it breaks. You could do a video recording with a clear image, with a clear shot of the for of the clear shot. Because what might happen is once it breaks, obviously you can't see the reading anymore. Um, so you might want like a video to like record what's that really recording of a clear shot of the spring scale measurement. And then five, repeat with all rods. I don't think I need to do that. I can see the force. 
I would know the radius. That's it. Okay. For a rod of radius r0, it is determined that f max is f0, as indicated in the grid below. On the grid drawn label, graphs corresponding to each of the two students' models and the dependence on f max on rod radius clearly label each graph a or b. So student a, remember he. So what's the difference between the students? Student A thinks it's proportional to the radius. Here he thinks it's proportional to the cross-section area of the rod. So for student A, his model looks, should look like this. F max is, e is equal to some constant times the radius. And for B, his F max should be proportional to pi r squared. Or uh, let's call that K1, Ka and Kb. Um, proportional to the cross-sectional area. So in terms of r, if we're measuring r versus f, we would expect a very linear relationship. So if there is zero radius, we expect no force to break it. So it, it, like, not, there's no y-intercepts. So it should be purely linear in terms of relationship for student A. So it should be a constant slope like that. OK, so we're going to call that A. Now for student B, I use a different color. We would expect a quadratic relationship. That means if you doubled it, it should go up four times the force. And if you tripled it, you should go nine times the force. And so we should expect a quadratic relationship instead. Okay, and this is student B. So I'd expect a R squared dependency versus a linear dependency. The table below assumes the results of measurements taken by another group of students for rods of different thicknesses. On the grid below, plot the data points from the table and clearly label on all axes and draw a straight line or curve that best represents the data. So they just want you to do this data. So let's say this is R and this is F. Let's see, the radius go up to 2.5. So let's make this 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, and 2.5. This is 0. This is measured in millimeters. And F in newtons here. Let's see, we can go 400 to 900. So let's, uh, sorry, 40 to 900. So definitely have to have zero here. And I think these have to go by 200 if I need to go up to 900. Thousand, and this is force in newtons. So then what would I say our points are? It's 0 0.5, it's 40. Well, halfway, so each of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they give you 5. So each of these are 40. So 40 is there. When 1, it's 120. 40, 80, 120. 1.5, it's 320. That's 200, 240, 280, 320. And then at 2, it's 520. 500, this is uh, 540, 580, 520. Sorry, 440, 480, 520. And then at 2.5, it's 900. 900 is halfway between here and here. So it's going to be that point here. So definitely does not look linear. Definitely looks like a quadratic. Oh, I cannot freehand this. All right. Looks quadratic to me. Which statement is more uh, closely resembled? Student me is the shape of the curve. Uh, the relation, or so I say, the relationship between F and R looks more quadratic than linear. Okay, you didn't have to linearize the model in that one, which was I thought a little bit interesting, but uh, yeah, that's that's all I would say there.